Hello Reward Practitioners, this is Ali Nese, and today I'd like to review with you the basic ESX sequence and go again a little bit over its, how it was developed, what its history is, and how it was inspired from the end of sequence system, which is an established uh, filing system that has been around for the past 10 years. First and foremost, though, I wanted to reiterate the fact that uh, this file is very special to us here at Rewaldendo because it was developed by Rewaldendo. It is distributed by Brassler USA, but uh, the system and the, um, uh, the concept was inspired uh, here at Rewaldendo by uh, the original Endo sequence filing system, uh, which was then modified. So, uh, Rewaldendo, again, is an innovation education and consulting company that uh, we have a number of endodontist clinicians and academicians around the country and uh, now globally that uh, with a shared common vision of educating responsibly and developing techniques and technology that helps you, the practitioner, uh, achieve long-term endodontic success. So it was with this idea that Brassler USA approached us with a task of helping them uh, take their existing and established and highly successful endosequence filing uh, instrumentation and alteration system and develop a brand new uh, filing system called the ESX. And the requirement here was to make the system more efficient. Now, uh, we are a big fan of efficiency here at Rewald Endo, and all our practitioners are uh, highly efficient in their own clinical practice. And they wanted, they wanted us to see how we can take a file that is electro-polished, uh, has alternating contact points, and uh, has a reamer design cross-section that rotates at 600 RPM, and uh, make that more efficient. Well, it certainly was a huge task for us because the endo sequence file system that was originally designed by Drs. Koch and Brave over 10 years ago was a highly efficient and successful uh, instrumentation system. What we decided to do was to take this uh, filing system and figure out, first of all, how it was originally designed and see how we could improve on it. The endo sequence filing system is highly versatile. You have uh, basically file sizes from 15 to 50 in the 06 taper, 15 through 80 in the 04 taper, and also if you add the race files to it, you have sizes 15 through 80 in the 02 taper. So you have a number of files that can basically apply to any kind of shape and canal size that is available. Dr. Scotch and Brave, however, decided to um, simplify the system by creating procedural packages, sizes small, medium, and large, uh, and put these, uh, and also an extra large that came a little bit later on, and put four files per package uh, from which you would derive a master file, uh, and that would be the file with which you would then instrument and obturate your case. The concept was driven back 20 years ago, and I do recall because Dr. Koch was my program director at Harvard uh, about 20 or so years ago, and he used to talk about this idea all the time. And the idea was one of uh, why is it that we don't have a matching got a perch on paper point for our files? And this now seems to be something that is very intuitive and everybody does. However, back 20 years ago, for those of you who don't recall, this idea that you would have matching uh, got a purchase and a paper point for your file just didn't exist. Manufacturers at the time were either making got a purchase points, paper points, or uh, files. And so what you had to do is you had to uh, create a shape, a kind of a variable tapered uh, shape with your Gates Glidden's hand files and, uh, and so on. And then you had to custom fit and match a gutta percha cone with tug back uh, for that given shape. Well, Dr. Kai said, well, now that we have rotary files, why can't we have a predefined shape designed into the file, a rotary file, that we could then basically get down to the apex with the help of a number of other files uh, and then have a matching gutta percha point and paper point for that shape. And that was the genesis of this idea. So the whole concept of the endo sequence is taking a master file down to the apex and then having 
uh, a match and got a purchase point and paper point to match that. And the way they devised the algorithm by which you would do the basic endo sequence technique, so uh, the protocol, if you will, for the basic uh, endo sequence technique was to use a number 10 hand file to the apex, then take an expediter file, which was a 2704 uh, tip, and then use that as a screening file and use the specific motion of rhythm technique, which was three strokes, and then removing the file and wiping it and cleaning it. Uh, and depending on how deep the expediter file went into the canal, you would choose either a small, a medium, or a large package of endosequence procedural packs. And from that, you would end up with four files that you would use in decreasing tip sizes in a crown down fashion. And uh, uh, as I said again, the small, medium, or large, uh, depending on how deep the expediter went into the canal, would determine which package or file you would open, small, medium, or large. And you would use those files in a crown down fashion until one file would end up being your master file, which would be the last file to which you would match your gutta percha on paper point. So, Agribold Endo uh, would, um, you know, everybody in our group uses the endo sequence uh, file and has been using it for a number of years. I have used the endo sequence file myself for the past 10 years and I've performed over 10,000 cases uh, using the endo sequence uh, file. And we found a pattern that in these procedural packs, we would end up primarily with three uh, main master apical files and there were sizes 25, 35 and 45. So what we decided to do was to say, well, one way to be more efficient was to come up with a way that we could immediately, after using the expediter, could come up with that master apical file so that we wouldn't have to use the additional three files in that package so in order to reach the master apical file. So, you know, it seems easy, but how do you get rid of three files in a four file pack and be able to have a tip that still guides so that your master file immediately after the expediter file doesn't end up ledging the canal or uh, end up getting over torqued. So luckily right around, right around the same time uh, a new booster tip technology was being developed and we will talk about the booster tip technology uh, later on but we decided to then uh, implement or add as a feature the booster tip to these finishing files 25, 35, and 45. And uh, therefore, the booster tip allows the file tip to be a guiding file. So the addition of the booster tip uh, was going to help us uh, get rid of the additional three files and still not ledge the canal and have the file be a, uh, you know, have the tip of the file be guiding the master file down to the full working length. So that was great, uh, but we also said, well, up until now, the expediter file was a screening file. Why not use the expediter file in a more positive way? And previously, the expediter file was a 2704. Why can't we use the expediter file as a first shaping file that we would use to determine a, uh, or to give the canal a predefined uh, shape that, from which we could then drive a corresponding master file or a finishing file, if you will. And we found that with experience that the size 1505 seemed to be a very good size uh, with a size 15 tip that is a fairly strong tip and an 05 taper, which is somewhere between the 04 and the 06 taper, which is robust and yet not too aggressive. Uh, in order to give us, we start the case with a 1505 shape uh, and then from there uh, we would drive E, uh, either one of the small, medium, or large uh, ESX finishing files, 25, 35, or 45, down to the apex. And uh, the question was, how can we make the journey safer for the expediter first to reach down? And it was to, well, let's instead of starting from a size 10 hand file, let's start from a size 15 or 2 hand file, so that the expediter file is not engaging uh, at the tip. Uh, once you have a 15 or to hand file down to the working length, then your expediter file is merely cutting laterally and enlarging the taper, which will then help your finishing file 
with the booster tip to reach down the apex in a predictable and safe way. So the new and improved protocol for the ESX became this idea of a 1502, get the canal to a 1502 hand file, then use the expediter file, which is a 1505, down to the apex. And the ter size determination uh, is then done based on the level of engagement on the expediter file on this journey down to the apex. So if the expediter en engages significantly in a given canal, then your final finishing file would be a size 25. If the expediter on its way down to the apex is engaged only moderately, then you would end up using a size 35. And if it goes in there with minimal engagement, then you have a size 45 finishing file. Now, we also realize that some cases, especially anteriors, anterior teeth and so on, you may end up with a larger than a 45. So your 45 goes down and you feel that you still have tissue down there. And in those cases, you'd basically be using a 55. The 5504 uh, would then be used after 45, and that would be your extra large finishing ESX finishing file. So it seemed to be a fairly logical algorithm and fairly easy to follow. When we come back, we're going to discuss each feature of the ESX filing uh, system and instrumentation uh, technique, both the booster tip and then also the SSC, which is a single stroke and clean uh, feature, which helps reduce the torque on the files.